morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we start a new series that I'm just titling The Living World. Now, do note this series is going to be long, and it's going to have a bunch of diverse topics in it. We're going to go into everything from invertebrates today to comparative anatomy to different body systems to the evolution of vertebrates. We got a bunch of stuff that's going to be covered in this series so we're just going to kind of lump it all together. Our main topic for today is invertebrates and by the end of our little chat today there are two things that I need you to know or be able to do. The first one is to track the evolution of invertebrates from sponges to echinoderms and list major derived characters that separate one group from the next. So how did we get from sponges all the way up to the starfish? Now before we get going um, let me just note that the invertebrates cannot be equaled in terms of sheer numbers and biomass they are the most numerous organisms on the face of the earth. That being said, note that this video is not meant to be an exhaustive study of them. This is not an invertebrate zoology class. This is just a quick overview of major steps that separate one clade from the next, um, kind of showing how they can be grouped together and showing advancements in form over time. After you're done with today, you should be able to make like a simple phylogenetic tree, but probably not discuss each of these exhaustively. So just wanted to make that clear before we get going. So we're going to start with the most basic, move all the way up to the most complex, and then we'll be done for the day. Starting off the party, we have got these sponges. Now, sponges, here's what you need to know. They do have specialized cells, and they are the first kind of animal, I guess you would say, in that they do have specialized cells. They have specialized cells that are grouped together, and they do have a body plan, but they don't have any true tissues. So you don't have, like, epithelium or organs or anything like that, but they are considered animals in that they do have sponges or cells that are specialized for feeding. Um, they do filter water to obtain food. They do reproduce. So they are living. They are animals, but they are the most basic of such. Now, as I go forward, pretty much assume that if I mention a characteristic and then don't mention it again, it's present in all of the animals following that one. But I'll try to be more clear about that along the way. A little bit more advanced than the sponges, we have the nidaria. Now, the nidaria, as far as examples go, um, generally the class is known for jellyfish, but it also includes sea anemones. Now, Starting with the, the Nidaria, we have got a group of organisms called protostomes. That, that means that as they are developing, when they're in their embryonic stages, um, the blastopore, which is the pore that becomes the mouth and the anus in some organisms, ends up developing into a mouth first. And we'll talk about deuterostomes later on, but deuter deuterostomes are organisms where that um, pore ends up developing into the anus, and they are generally more complex organisms. But as far as an area concerned, here are the things that you need to know about them. Um, they have the first presence of a nervous system in that they've just got a simple net of nerves that covers the inside of their body. Um, they can respond to simple stimuli, but they don't have any direction or cephalization or anything like that. They have a blind gut, which means that there is one opening for food to go in, and it is the same organ or uh, same opening that waste goes out. And they get all of their oxygen and gas exchange by diffusion directly across their epidermis. Now we're going to get a little bit more complex. And from the Nidaria, we are moving to the flatworms. I thought that, was, that picture was better last time. But anyway, flatworms are really pretty set of organisms. Um, they are the first organism to show bilateral symmetry, which means that if you cut them in half, one side will be the same as the other. Jellyfish nidarians are radially symmetrical, which means you can cut them like a pizza. Um, they are still using diffusion for their respiration. They are protostomes. Um, they have got nerve cords, so we have moved from having just kind of a net of nerves to nerve cords, where these guys will have like up towards the head, they'll have some sense organs and a bundle of nerve cells called a ganglia, and then there are two nerve cords that run down their back. So it's a more advanced system than the nidaria. They do still have a blind gut though, which means that everything comes in and goes out through the same pore. Stepping on up from the flatworms, we have got the mollusks. Now, first thing I want to say about the mollusks is they are a very diverse group. On the right-hand side there, you have got the blue-ringed octopus, but know that mollusks also include clams, they include snails, oysters, um, they include sea slugs, things like that. So it's a very diverse group of organisms. Um, some things that make them unique is that they have a three-part body. So whether you are an octopus or a snail, the three parts are the foot, 
that is going to be whatever helps the organism to get around. They've got a visceral mass, which means that they have got specialized organs that are clumped together, and then they've got a mantle. Now, the mantle is the hardened shell. It's usually calcareous, which means that it contains a bunch of calcium carbonate. Um, obviously, in the snails and clams and oysters and things like that, the mantle is a shell on the outside. If you are talking about like an octopus on the inside of their body, they have got a long, it's called a pin. Um, it's a long piece of calcareous material um, that is kind of their mantle. So it's been reduced and internalized in those organisms. But that's the three main parts of a mollusk. They are coelomates. Now, a coelomate means that they have got a body cavity that contains their organs on the inside that was not seen in the previous organisms. So these guys have got coelomes, which is that body cavity. They do have specialized organs. Um, they've got gills for breathing, and they've got a complex nervous system. Now, octopi are said to be very, very intelligent, um, but even like snails and clams and moths, they do show like some uh, basal ganglia or some ganglia that help them to sense the living world or the world outside them and to take action in response to stimuli. Moving on up from the mollusks, we have got the annelids. Now, I know that it's kind of hard to think about earthworms and um, leeches and things like that as being more complex than mollusks, but they do have a couple of unique features that kind of set them apart. They are coelomates, so they do have a body cavity. They are the first organisms to show closed circulation. So in the mollusks, what you've got essentially is you've got like a heart-type organ that pumps a... Uh, circulatory fluids called hemolymph, but it pumps it out into big open spaces. And so this um, pump will pump the blood out, it'll bathe the organs, and then it'll kind of get sucked back into this pump. It's not really enclosed in a circulatory system. Anelids are the first ones to show a closed circulatory system, which means that all of the blood stays within vessels. Um, they do have brains and ganglia for sensing, so they do have a nervous system, and they also do have organs. Um, also note that annelids have got a segmented body. You can see right there on the right. Um, they've got body segments that repeat over and over and over again. Beyond the annelids, we have got the most successful group on earth, and these are the arthropods. Now, arthropods have a ton of representatives. Know that insects are included in this. You have got things like crabs and lobsters are represented in here. You have got spiders, you have got ticks, you've got ants, you have got horseshoe crabs. All of those things are considered to be arthropods. Unique characteristics of arthropods are as follows. They've got an exoskeleton, so none of the groups up to this point have showed any sort of skeleton. These guys have got a hard chitinous. Chitin is a protein that makes their skeleton hard. A uh, chitinous skeleton that surrounds and protects their body. Um, because they've got a hard shell on their outside, if they're going to move, they need to have jointed appendages. Now, these jointed appendages are paired. They include walking legs, they include mouth parts, they include antennae, they include all of the little creepy crawly things that you see on arthropods. Um, they also have got a body that is segmented, usually into a head, thorax, and abdomen, though that is not always the case. Our final group is going to be kind of a bit what? This is more complex. They are the echinoderms, which are the sea stars. And generally speaking, in terms of like response and things like that, not more complex than the other groups. But there is one thing that sets them apart, two things actually. Um, this is the first group of organisms that are deuterostomes. That means that in terms of development, that blastopore becomes the anus. And that's significant because most complex organisms have this mode of development. At the level of DNA, they also have got more DNA similarities to chordates, which means things that have got a dorsal nerve cord, spinal cord. Um, they are related to the vertebrates-ish um, in that they do have an endoskeleton. So where our insects and our arthropods showed an exoskeleton, these do have a hard skeleton on the inside that's covered by an epidermis on the outside. Also unique to them is a water vascular system. So they've got this whole like pneumatic water system inside of them, which is a series of canals that they fill up with water. And they use that system as kind of like a pneumatic pump to help them move their arms. They've got these little tube feet for moving and feeding. That's powered by the water vascular system. And so there are things about them that are unique. On the surface, they seem like they are less complex. But know that along the evolutionary tree, they are closer to us than, say, 
an insect. Um, I hope that overview was helpful to you. Like I said, this is not meant to be an exhaustive study. It's just to mark some major points along the development of the living world. My name is Mr. Kite. This is the Lab 207 webcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully we'll see you again.